Anything else I can help you with, Mrs. Banning? No, thank you very much. Mrs. Banning? I'm Ben Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright. How good of you to extend your hospitality to a poor, sick stranger. Well, really, the wife of Horace Banning is hardly a stranger. What a very nice thing for you to say. Uh, this is my daughter, Melinda. Coachman, it's been a delightful experience. Thank you, ma'am. Might I suggest that in the future you try to keep your carriage a little bit cleaner? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mrs. Banning, my buckboard is right over there. I, I hope you won't find that one too dusty. Oh, I feel sure that your conveyance will be more than satisfactory, Mr. Cartwright. Come along, Melinda. This is where the Ponderosa begins. Well, this is the domain of an emperor. Well, how do you like it, Melinda? It's so different from home. It's like being in another world. Well, we want you both to feel that this is your home, and we want you both to stay as long as you possibly can, or at least as long as Horace can bear to be without you. Well, you do make us feel most welcome, Benjamin. I wish Daddy were here. So do I, darling. So do I. It is too bad that he couldn't have come up with us. But publishing a daily newspaper is quite a job. You know, it must be about 25 years since I've seen Horace. But even in those days, I, I knew he'd be a success. Mm -hmm. boys, Hoss, little Joe. Well, how wonderful it is to meet both of you. My, they're striking specimens, Benjamin. <laughs> Must be your fine Ponderosa air here. <laughs> Aren't they handsome, Melinda? Yes, very. Oh, thank you very much, ma'am. Welcome to the Ponderosa. We heard you was coming, Miss Benning. Paul told us you're in kind of bad health. I hope the Ponderosa and your stay here will make you feel better. Well, thank you very much, Hoss. It's nothing serious, really. I'm just overtired. I want to see the horses. Uh, come with me. I read about that once. I never dreamed I'd ever see a bucking bronco. Uh, have a good look. It looks so dangerous. We have to do it every day. He's quite a daredevil. It's my older brother Adam. He's a darn good horsebreaker. Ah! 
horse looks like it's half wild. Well, he was all wild once. It's hard to think of horses as being wild. Where I come from, they're, they're all so gentle. Well, you gotta break them, and they won't do any work for you. What is it that has to be broken, little Joe? Uh, it's just, uh, just the wildness that's in them. Well, this is my brother, Adam. Adam, this is our guest, Melinda Banning. Good morning, Melinda. Welcome to the Ponderosa. I'm afraid we're gonna have to excuse him for a minute. It's time for you to go to work, buddy. They got a little old horse over there all ready for you. Whoa! Oh. Oh. Stay right here, I'll be back. Adam? Yeah? That was so exciting. It looked so very dangerous. It's just a job. Watch him. All right, turn him out! That horse will kill him. Well, it hasn't happened to him yet. Stop bucking now. Does that mean he's broken? I know, but most of the fight's out of him. Oh. Oh. Great, Joe. Just great. Oh, you're not so bad yourself, brother. All you need is a little practice. What'd you think of the ride? I don't know how you do it. He doesn't either. Thanks a lot. Well, you see, it didn't hurt the horse, and now it'll be useful. No longer free to do what he wants, but useful. Melinda, come along. I must say, I find myself a bit surprised at these Cartwrights. For all their money, they live out here like so many savages. Of course, that could be improved. And they are of good family. A bit uncouth, perhaps, but there's good blood there. There is. And their holdings. They're as vast as half the state of Maryland. Mother? And what you could do with this place. I can see it, the servants, the butlers, the footmen. Mother, may I say something? No, darling, not in that tone of voice. That always means that you're about to think for yourself. Anyhow, we said everything there was to be said before we ever left Baltimore. But, Mother, please, just listen to me for a moment. <laughs> yes, Melinda. Are you sure? Are you quite sure that what we're doing is right? Don't you know? In your heart, don't you know? that what I'm doing is for your own good. Hmm? Mother... Come on, now. Get out of that tub and get dressed. Mother, please listen to me. Melinda, there is nothing sadder, more futile than foolishness. And you, my poor darling, seem to have been blessed with more than your portion, thanks to your father. But you're lucky, because to compensate, you have beauty. Beauty that was wasted in Baltimore, thanks to the way we had to live due to your father's. That isn't what I wanted to know. I know all that. I wanted you to tell me that what we're doing isn't wrong. Wrong? Oh, no. No, of course not. Everything that we're doing is right. 
Happiness for you is right. Security for you is right. Security for your children, nothing. Everything that we are doing is right. It's all right. How could I be anything but right, wanting all of this for you? Melinda? Baby, I have fought for your happiness from the day that you were born. But I'm getting tired. I really am. I'm awfully tired. There isn't a great deal of fight left in me. Selfishly, I've even been hoping that somewhere in your future there might be a little peace, a little satisfaction for me, too. Ruin those wonderful eyes. You are a lovely girl. I merely want someone to appreciate that. Come on, let's get dressed. That was a delicious meal, Benjamin. Really delicious. Well, thank you. We, uh, I'm so pleased that you enjoyed your first minute of the Ponderosa. I enjoyed it all thoroughly. Miss Melinda, you ain't tasted nothing yet. You taste some of Singh's Hong Kong mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Baltimore is noted for its food, especially seafood. Uh, we catch some pretty fine trout around here, too. Chinka tea oysters lying on a bed of glistening ice and lobsters, first broiled and then served in melted butter. And our home, brilliantly lit with hundreds of candles in crystal chandeliers, and in one part of the room, a small orchestra playing gently and softly. Very often, the music by that gifted young Polish composer, Mr. Chopin. And the servants, one behind each place, in the white uniforms, the white cotton gloves, the white stockings. <laughs> And inevitably, the governor is the first one to arrive. He's always so prompt. But then he has great respect for my husband and Horace. Poor dear, dear Horace. How he fusses about the social life I impose upon him. But I think deep down he enjoys it just as much as I do. I'm afraid he'd be rather disappointed in our primitive way of life out here. Oh, no, 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 not at all. You're wrong about that. Horace is a great out-of-doors man. You'd all like him so much. But do you know, his idea of a banquet is a hunt breakfast after an early morning exciting ride to the hounds. He has his own stables. Most of them are thoroughbreds. I feel a little faint. I, I need some air. I think it was all the traveling today. Oh, no, no, gentlemen, please sit down. Melinda's given to these momentary spells. Poor darling, she's been so delicately born and so delicately bred. I think I better see that she's all right. Excuse me. Melinda, you all right? I'm fine, little Joe. You shouldn't have left the others. Well, I, I saw that way you looked. It worried me. You're nice, little Joe. Hey, you know, you don't talk much. Your mother seems to do it for both of you. She's much wiser than I am. Yeah. But, you know, the, the things she was talking about, I've only read about them in books. Must be a lot different for you out here. I like it here. We like having you here. Such a, a wonderful feeling of feeling of family. <laughs> yeah, I know. Pa talks about that all the time, the family. That's how everybody thinks of us around here, the Cartwright family. You don't have to be here long to realize you all belong together. Hey, you know, sometimes I think we're together too much. You know, it's a little rough on me being the youngest. Well, here I am talking about myself, and it's really you I want to talk about. There isn't very much to know. Where I come from, I lead a very quiet life. Quiet? What, with that house and all those servants and the, the governor coming to dinner all the time? Your father being a big newspaper publisher? I... 
What's the matter? You feel bad again? It's nothing. I mean, you're not disappointed in the way the way we live out here. Oh, Joe, please. I can't stand these terrible lies anymore. Your awful stories about parties and servants and hunt breakfasts. Until I conceived this idea of bringing you out here, you were irrevocably committed to the kind of life I've had. And nobody knows better than you what that's been. But here, out here, I've created a new image for you. You have glamour and distinction and mystery. And you mustn't do anything to alter that, darling. Not until after you and Joseph are married. Then it won't matter. Why must it be little Joe? Because Horst doesn't feel that way about you. And Adam is far too cunning. I watched him at dinner tonight. He'd be too difficult to control. Suppose I don't love little Joe. That doesn't matter. Marriage is a contract. No contract can be executed under the influence of emotion. I suppose you're right. Of course I'm right. You'll have a perfect marriage with Joseph. You'll be able to twist him around your little finger. Just think. You'll have everything your own way. Just think how happy you will be. You've been twisting my father around your little finger for 25 years. Has it made you happy? Who in the whole world could be happy with your father? For you, Melinda, it's going to be different. So different. And I ask you with all my heart to believe me when I say everything I'm doing, I am doing for you. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's just wonderful. What is it? Well, the recipe's been in my family for generations. It comes from France. Do you have any wine? Well, it's a little early in the morning for that, isn't it? Not for me, silly. For the stew. I told you this recipe came from France. No, I, uh... I don't think we have any wine around here. <clears throat> if you think real hard, it'll come to you. It's in the pantry. Oh, yeah, the, the pantry. For, for the minister, I forgot. I knew it would come to you. Well, I'll get it. I haven't seen much of you the last few days, Adam. You haven't seen much of anybody except Joe. I've missed you. <laughs> I'll bet you have. No, Adam, believe me. What kind of a woman are you? First it's Joe, and the minute his back is turned, it's me. Adam, if you just let me explain, Adam. Yes, Melinda? I was going to ask you if you'd like to taste some of the beef stew. No, I'd rather be surprised. He's going to be surprised, all right. Wine and beef stew. What are the Frenchmen going to think of next? Well, that was the most delicious dinner ever served in this house, ever. Don't thank me, then. Melinda's such a fine cook. She was instructed by one of the greatest culinary teachers in the world. I like it better here at night. You can't see how big the country is. I guess you must be getting pretty lonesome for home. I suppose I am. If not the way it sounds. It's, it's just that I'm, I'm used to it back there. You think you could ever get used to the way it is out here? You get used to love, little Joe, and then you don't have to get used to anything else. Does that mean what I want it to mean? You're sweet, little Joe. You're the nicest person I've ever met. You're pretty sweet yourself. 
I haven't been able to think of much else since you got here. And I'm glad I came. But I'd like to ask you a question if I... if I thought you'd give me an answer now. What answer do you want, little Joe? You answered me. It really is invigorating, isn't it? It's like fine perfume. Mother, the men may not like it, bothering them while they work. Joseph asked you to come, did he not? Yes, Mother. Men adore women who show an interest in their work. It makes them so proud of their little achievements. Mother, there's something I must tell you. Please, Melinda, I have ordered you not to think. <laughs> Benjamin! Well, I, uh... I got these side saddles. I hope they're what you're used to. Benjamin, you don't think the boys would mind if we looked in on their work for a while, do you? Mind? Why, not at all. I, as a matter of fact, I think you'd find the work we do in the Ponderosa very interesting. Now, you won't forget where they are. They're just over that next rise. Mm. Uh, shall I help you up? Oh, would you please? Oh, boy. I wonder who asked them out here. Well, I did. Any reason why I shouldn't? They're our guests, Adam. All right, Melinda, you have a good ride? Howdy, right, ma'am. You enjoy yourself? I should say we did. Thank you so much. Oh, there we are. That was just fine. Just fine. Well. Are you cooking? <laughs> no, ma'am, we're not. You don't seem very glad to see us, Adam. No, I was just thinking about your comfort. This might be a little rough on you. Thank you very much, Adam. But you'll find that Melinda can accustom herself to anything that happens on a ranch. Sure. Oh, let's get the cab, will you? Joe, get some more wood. Right, Adam. Excuse me. to burn that tiny thing. All cattle look alike. It's the only way we have of putting our name on them. Besides, it's not really as bad as it looks. I told you the women shouldn't be here. Now, why don't you just go back to the house? Adam, you don't have to talk to her that way. All right, the girl's sick. Why don't you take her home? I'll take her home, but only because she's sick. Come on. I'm sorry. I guess it threw me seeing her keel over that way. I'm sorry, Melinda. Looks like little Joe's sort of stuck on that gal, don't it? Yeah. Now, let's get back to work. Yeah, just remember, we all got to live here together, Adam. Right, get another cat, will you? All right. What kind of wire is that? Barbed. It's full of sharp points. Experience. That's the best way to learn. 
But it's so cruel. Well, it goes along with everything else here. Breaking horses, branding calves. Everything's done with pain. You don't have a patent on hurt. Melinda, you are a guest here, and you're free to come and go as you please. But it is a working ranch, and at the moment, I'm pretty busy. Leave me alone. Get away from me. I don't need your help. Looks like you do. There you are. I don't know what led me to do that. Adam, what are you doing? Nothing, Joe, nothing. What do you mean you're doing nothing? Oh, come on. Joe, what do you mean, wait a minute, that's the girl I'm gonna marry. I'm gonna marry? It happened last night, I wanted to tell you when we were all together. Oh, wait a minute, now, didn't this happen awful sudden like I mean... Uh, uh, Joe, are you are you sure you love her? More than anything in the world. So when I saw her oh, with wait Adam... A, wait a minute now, Joe. Adam didn't know how you felt about Melinda. No, well, none of us did. I suppose you're right. So I think I'd better set him straight. No, wait, wait, Joe. Joe, look, uh, you go up to the house. Please, go up to the house. Yes, sir. dress tangle on the wire, and I helped her, that's all. Did you know that Joe wants to marry her? You're kidding. No, he just told me. When did all this happen? Well, evidently last night. Well, it can never be. She's not in love with him. What do you mean? She's not in love with him. Look at him. Do you have any feeling for this girl yourself? No, no, but that's not the point. What is the point? The point is, she kissed me. She kissed me, but she's marrying him. Oh, this is developing into some situation. Well, that's for sure. Look, I think it might be a good idea if I got away for a couple of days. Go down to Tucson, maybe uh, look at that new strain of beef, huh? That might be a good idea. All right, if they cost? Yeah, sure, sure. Pop. Hmm? What's going to happen if Joe marries her and then finds out that she doesn't love him? Surprise, Deborah! Surprise! What in heaven's name are you doing here? Hello, Deborah. Horace. I asked you a question. 
What are you doing here? Well, my dear, I'm afraid I have some unfortunate news. Some unfortunate news? That means you've lost your job again. Well, that hardly surprises me. Well, why did you come here? Of all times, why did you come here now? But, Deborah, you're here. Where else would I go? Any place, any place in the whole wide world except here. Now, you get on that thing and you ride out of here just twice as fast as you came in. But, Deborah, I don't understand. It's been such a long trip. I'm hungry and I'm tired. Why must I go? Why can't I stay here? Why can't I see Melinda and my old friend, Ben? Because your old friend, Ben, is the last person in the world I want you to see right now. Horace, Melinda and Joseph Cartwright are going to be married. Married? Why, that's just wonderful. Melinda and the son of my old friend. I think that's simply wonderful. Why, it looks like I got here just at the right time. Horace, I have worked for weeks in time and in effort to bring this marriage about. And now you come along unexpectedly and spoil everything. Spoil everything? How could I do that? Why would I do anything to hurt Melinda? I'm her father. You are not Melinda's father. Not a father. You are not the father I have described to Ben Cartwright. But Ben knows me. He knows I'm her father. Ben Cartwright thinks Melinda's father is a successful businessman. He thinks we have lived in grace and splendor. He thinks she has known culture and wealth. I don't know why you made up all those lies, but I know Ben Cartwright. And I know that whether Melinda had money or not wouldn't mean a thing to him if his son loved her. You fool. You dull, thick-headed, idiotic fool. All your life, you've been avoiding reality. Deborah, I don't think that's fair. Well, this is one reality you're not going to avoid. You have been, you have always been, a detriment to your daughter. Deborah. And now you are a threat to her future. If, as you say, you love her, if you really love her, you will get out of here. Don't bring her future happiness crashing down around her head. missed you too, Daddy. Your mother tells me you're about to get married. Yes, and, and now you can be here for the wedding too. I was hoping for that. And Mr. Cartwright is going to be so pleased to see you. He talks about you all the time. Let's go see if we can find him. Uh, no, Melinda, I, I'm not going to stay here. You're not going to stay, but where are you going? You just got here. Your mother, she thinks, well, uh, it's better that I go away again, you know. Uh, Ben thinks I'm a successful. Well, all he need is one look at me. And... Yes, I, I see. Your mother's right, you know. Oh, yes, she's right. The only thing important now is you. What happens to you? Mustn't let anything endanger that. No, I, I suppose she's right. Horace, will you please go before they come and find you here? Melinda, I, I haven't been a very good father, I know that, but before I go... Just tell me that you love this boy and, and that you'll be happy. She has told you. She's my child, Deborah, just as much as she's yours. Now you get out of here. And if you do anything to interfere with this marriage, I swear by everything that's in me, I will kill you. <laughs> moment, Deborah. That might be an act of grace. Horace? Horace! My golly, what a, what a wonderful surprise! Ben. <laughs> Ben, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Too many years, Isn't Horace. Isn't it wonderful, Benjamin? Yes. It's... Now Horace is going to be here for Melinda's wedding, after all. You were the one thing that was lacking, my darling. But now that you're here, everything's going to be all right. 
Oh, you must be so tired, my sweet. Come along. We'll get you washed up. Come oh, along. We'll, we'll, we'll talk, Horace. I'll get your things. Oh, Joe, did you see Melinda's father? I'll tell you, it was the most wonderful surprise when I... Yeah. Oh, what is it, Joe? It's Melinda. Oh, say, um, what was troubling her? I don't know. She was crying. She said it was all the excitement about seeing her father. Well, of course it was. I guess it was. I'm, I'm probably just imagining things. Well, what else could it have been? I don't know, just a feeling I have. I love her so much, Pa. You do? Oh, she's so beautiful. Well, you've been around pretty girls before. Yeah, but it's not just that. It's, it's everything about her, the way she talks, the clothes she wears, where she comes from. I've just never known a girl like her before. That's why I worry sometimes. I wonder if she can be happy out here. She's so used to the way it was back there. Of course she will be. Then I see her cry. I guess I get a little scared. Huh? Good evening, Ben. Nothing like a shave and a bath to make one feel like a new man. Well, I'm glad you're feeling so much better. Will Melinda and Deborah be down shortly? In a little while, you know women. It takes them longer to comb their hair than it takes a man to grow a beard. <laughs> know exactly what you mean. Well, dinner won't be ready for an hour anyway. Another hour? Mm. Hop Singh wants to outdo himself. Hmm. Well, that'll give us a little time for a talk. Uh, about old times, eh, Ben? I've been looking forward. Well, not, not exactly about old times. I, uh... I'd like to talk to, about your daughter and my son. All right, Ben. How about the happy young couple? That's just the point. Will they be a happy young couple? Why, I don't understand. Deborah assures me this is going to be a perfect marriage. The young people, she says, are very much in love. I'm worried about them, Horace. Worried? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that possible to worry about? Well, for one thing, their backgrounds are so different. Joseph has spent most of his life right here on the Ponderosa. Oh, boys have been back east on visits, certainly, but he's a, he's a boy who's grown up on a ranch. Well, Melinda, well, you know her background better than I do, Horace. You know, the cultural pursuits, the elaborate social life, the elegance of your home. Now, Ben, I... I don't think that's important. It's important to Melinda. If she has to give it all up for this kind of life. Oh, well, we like it, of course. We, it's what we know. But your daughter... Do you think she loves Joseph enough to want to give up all the wonderful things that you provided her with back east for this kind of life? Life on a ranch. Ben, I, I'm sure Deborah knows what's best. Horace, please. This is not Deborah's decision. It's Melinda's. Ask her. Now, she won't keep the truth from you any more than you would from me. Ben, there's something... You're right. I won't lie to you. I mean... I wouldn't lie to you, but lies have been told you about me and my success and Belinda and her background. Well? None of it. None of it's true. Nothing... Nothing is further from the truth. I... I don't even have a job. Deborah uh, concocted the whole elaborate scheme. Why, why would you have to do a thing like that? 
To snare a husband for our daughter. <laughs> well, does she have to pretend to be rich? Does she think I'm looking for rich wives for my sons? My wife's ambitious. I guess she's had to be with a failure for her husband. What she did was wrong, Ben. Very wrong. But she did it out of a sincere desire to provide Melinda with a, with a good home, with the kind of life that the Deborah's always wanted and, and, and never had. That's not the question now, is it? The important thing is... Does Melinda love Joseph? Or would she marry him? For money, for a share of the Ponderosa, the comforts that could be provided her. I honestly don't know, Ben. All her life, Deborah's been telling her what to like, what to think, what to do. Melinda, there's something I must ask you. Yes, Father. I heard you talking to Mr. Cartwright. I know what I must do. Where is little Joe, Mr. Cartwright? Well, he's, he's out of the barn. Uh, his horse went lame. He's tending to him. He's a fine girl, Horace. I'm glad you're both so honest. I'm glad we both finally found the courage. We kind of rough for them out there. Yes, but it would be better than a lifetime of unhappiness. I'll, uh, I'll tell Deborah. Uh, we'll be leaving for Baltimore in the morning, Ben. Horace, uh, there's no need for you to go back to Baltimore if you don't want to. I have a friend who's a publisher in San Francisco. Could be a fresh start for you. You could use a good man. I'm sorry, Joe. Not only for what my mother and I tried to do, but that we didn't fall in love. I fell in love. No. At least not with me. You fell in love with something my mother created. You can't stay in love with something that never existed. Everything's ready, Mr. Banning. Daddy? Mother? I... I don't know. She's in there with Ben. I'm not sorry for what I did. Not one iota. Well, I can understand that, Deborah. You, with all your money and your empire of the Ponderosa, how could you understand? I didn't inherit the Ponderosa. I worked to build it. But you've never known what it's like to be really poor, to scrimp and pinch and sacrifice, to feel ashamed, humiliated, and even angry at poverty, and to swear by all that's holy that the same thing won't happen to your daughter. Deborah, to want the best for your child, to fight for it, that's a fine thing. But to force her into your idea of her future, that's wrong. Wrong? Wrong for me to want the security and peace of a marriage for my daughter. Money can't guarantee that. Only love. Love. Horace and I married for love. Now look at us. I am looking. And I see a lovely young girl who loves her mother so much that she tries to obey her even though it almost breaks her heart. And I see a husband who loves his wife still in spite of the indignities and humiliations she heaps on him. I see two people who love you, and they're waiting for you, outside. I wrote a friend of mine, a publisher in San Francisco. I'm almost certain he'll give Horace a job. It'll be a fresh start for all of you. Go with them. <laughs> Goodbye, Ben, and thank you for everything. Goodbye, Horace. Good luck. Goodbye, Melinda. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright, and thank you.